Erika Sawajiri, one of Japan's most successful actresses, had a great life ahead of her with the career that she had built until a few mistakes put this career on the back burner forever. But how exactly did she ruin her career? Things started to get derailed in 2007 when Erika had a scandal that became known in the whole country and even sparked interest abroad. It was her Betsumi scandal, which for some, quickly became an iconic phrase. During her prime, Erika was one of the most in-demand actresses in the industry. She even managed to use her acting success to start a successful music career, with her first two singles reaching multi-platinum status. Nevertheless, during a press conference for the then-upcoming movie Closed Note, her career quickly went up in flames. It's safe to say that Erika didn't want to be present at that press conference. At least, that's what her body language showed. She was frowning hard and had her arms crossed most of the time. However, the moments when she was speaking and being interviewed truly show how badly she probably didn't want to be there. Since she was the guest star that day, she was asked to give a message to the audience. Her response was rather bleak. She thanked everyone for coming, but it was clear that her enthusiasm was lacking. When you're shooting a movie on set, there's obviously a lot that happens behind the scenes. But when the interviewer asked Erika if there was any memorable moments worth mentioning from the filming process, she replied by saying that there was nothing in particular. Her famous words came later in the interview when she was asked about how she felt about baking cookies for the directors of the movie. To this, Erika responded with Betsumi, which translates to, I didn't feel anything. This statement sparked a lot of interest in people who started to dissect the situation. The controversial phrase became one of the most infamous sayings in the Japanese entertainment industry, and even after all these years, it's what Erika is remembered for. At the time, the incident became a hot topic in Japan. She was extremely criticized by the public for disrespecting the people she worked with on the movie. Eventually, she was forced into apologizing for what she said during the press conference. She also denied that her management was dropping her for the scandal. At the time, she was in a relationship with Tsuyoshi Takashiro, a filmmaker 22 years older than her. For this, she also received tons of backlash. Things weren't going smoothly for Erika at all, so she decided to go on hiatus. This cost her quite a bit, because in 2009, her management dropped her, which made her lose her upcoming lead role in the movie Space Battleship Yamato. After she lost her agency, Erika decided to take matters into her own hands. In an interview with CNN in 2010, she revealed that she didn't want to apologize for her incident at all. In fact, she revealed that her agency forced her to do it. She said, Restricting talented people is the biggest problem in the entertainment business in Japan. A few years later, in 2013, Erika reflected on the situation and took a different stance. She said, No matter what situation I was in, the things I said up there on stage were not words that are supposed to be heard from a professional. She further added that she didn't think of all the children that would watch the movie and then think of her statement. She said she was immature at the time and had now grown into a person that could sincerely apologize for her wrongdoings. She revealed that the reason she said what she said was because she got so fed up with the predetermined standards that she had to adhere to. She explained that there's a fixed image of what an actress should be like and that she forced herself too much to follow this that she eventually exploded. In 2011, Erika even made light of the situation by using the incident in a Snickers commercial. In 2019, things got even worse for Erika to the point that there was no normal return for her in the industry. In November of that year, she got arrested for the alleged possession of various illegal substances which were reportedly found in her home in Tokyo. According to the report, Erika confessed to abusing substances for quite some time. The police found out about her possession of illegal substances because somebody tipped them off a month prior to her arrest. It seems like her mother was present when Erika's home got raided, and it was also reported that she was cooperative during the search. She spent the night at a police station in Koto Ward before being turned over to prosecutors. When the car left the police station, she was sitting in a curtained off back seat, so the reporters that were eagerly waiting to get a picture of her couldn't take one. In December of 2019, Erika was released from arrest because she paid a huge sum of money as bail. According to news reports, the bail amounted to 5 million yen, which is the equivalent of $35,000. After her release, she went to a rehabilitation hospital with the intention of getting better. The defense revealed that she will be monitored very strictly to make sure that she doesn't relapse again. At the time, Erika was set to star in the drama Awaiting Kirin, but the broadcasting company NHK announced that they would be replacing her because of her arrest. Through her agency Avex Management, Erika apologized to the public for the concern that she had caused. She assured everyone that she would cut ties with everything and everyone connected to substances and that she will seek guidance in her recovery. On February 6, 2020, Erika was on trial for the illegal substance possession. The court didn't go easy on her and gave her 18 months in prison. To top it off, she got suspended for three years. The verdict was decided after Erika admitted to all the allegations against her. She revealed that she wasn't able to live her life separately from all the bad influences surrounding her. She said that she strives to live a life without substances and the future, and that she sadly won't be returning as an actress. The prosecution revealed that Eddie
Monica has been dependent on substances since the age of 19. They added that she thought that if her substance abuse stayed under the radar of the authorities, then it wouldn't be a problem. Her addiction was too strong for her to stop using. After the trial, Etika once again apologized and let the public know she realizes how serious her crimes are. She said, I believe that the only way for me to make amends is to work hard for rehabilitation. I am taking the result of the trial seriously. More heartbreaking is that she revealed that she had missed the feeling of being cared for and that her current situation really reminded her of that. As a closing statement, she said, as a member of society and as a woman, I will once again reevaluate myself. As if the arrest wasn't enough, in 2020, more shocking information was revealed about Erika's past, specifically about her relationship back in 2009. She got married to Takashiro that year, but the two got a divorce in 2013. The shocking part is that the couple had some sort of premarital contract which contained rules regarding their relationship and more importantly, the amount of times Takashiro would be allowed to have intercourse with Erika for free. This was revealed in an episode of the television show Love of 7.7 .7 Billion. Reportedly, a monthly limit of intercourse was written down in the contract. Takashiro was required to pay Erika around $4,000 for each time they went above the allowed maximum of five times per month. There were also rules surrounding cheating. Allegedly, the contract stated that Erika's husband had to pay her around $79,000 each time he went on a date with another woman. This amount got doubled if he had intercourse with another woman. It's reported that Erika was only willing to stay in the marriage if these payments were made by Takashiro. Given all this information, it's not shocking that the divorce procedure was started only a year after the two got married. Erika's past has been quite controversial and people have criticized her a lot throughout the years. After her Betsuni scandal, she was perceived as hard to work with, and Erika even consistently appeared in Shunkan Bunchun's annual list of the top 10 most hated actresses, usually being within the top three. In other words, Japan held resentment for her for years, and her recent arrest only made it worse. However, despite the controversy surrounding her, she also let the public know that she didn't have it easy during her rise to fame. Even prior to getting famous, Erika had to deal with a great loss. She lost her father to cancer, and shortly after, her brother passed in a car accident. She started started working in the television industry when she was merely 13 years old, and this clearly took a toll on her. When she launched her music career, she got two number one hits, but it didn't seem like she was happy with them. She said, Actually, I was not really happy because I wasn't satisfied with those songs. In fact, I don't know how they could possibly reach number one. Like most talents in Japan, Erika was bound to a contract that dictated her life for a big part. This is something she struggled with quite a bit. She revealed a bit more about her experience and said, It was hard in Tokyo before I went. Every day was working and I couldn't sleep. I would get just three hours, so it was so hard every day. She also spent time with her husband in London, which she described as a nightmare. Despite the difficult time that she was facing, she still managed to drop hit songs and star in successful shows such as One Liter of Tears. That was all on Erika Sawajiri's career. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. Bye!